Apple's new MacBooks are a massive upgrade from the previous Intel Macs, but they are not perfect. And even though they brought back the ports, made a huge jump in both performance and battery life, and have shockingly good displays, they still have some weaknesses and still suck at certain things. So after two months of daily use, I wanna cover those areas where the new MacBooks still lack in, which is causing some people to hold on to their Intel Macs or buy Windows laptops instead. So as you guys know, we are are huge Mac fans, but that doesn't mean that we don't talk about the negatives and the downsides. And even though we made a top 10 problems video a month ago, most of those problems are still valid. And no, I am not just gonna be talking about those things in this video. These are new and unique, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first one has to be the lack of boot camp. Having the ability to run Windows was something that sold a lot of people on previous Macs, since if an app wasn't available for Mac OS, you could simply boot into Windows and run it. But with these Apple Silicon MacBooks, that is no longer possible. It is actually because of this that I don't have iMacs at home, but in instead have a couple of Windows PCs for my kids to use and game on. Now believe it or not, the reason why the new MacBooks don't have Windows Bootcamp support is actually because of Microsoft themselves. Apple said that everything is ready to go and they are waiting on them, but it turns out Microsoft made a secret exclusivity deal with Qualcomm for Windows ARM. But thankfully, that deal is coming to an end soon and should open up support. Now, the real question is if Microsoft will actually allow Windows to be installed on these Macs, because that will drive less sales to PC devices if Windows can be installed on Macs that are superior in most ways to their PC counterparts, especially the M1 MacBook Air, which costs less than their equivalent Windows laptops while being faster and having much better battery life. For now, you can use Parallels to set up a Windows virtual machine, which we show how in our guide, but you then have to use the limited developer preview ARM version of Windows, which has its own limitations. With that, we have the next weakness, and this time it is completely Apple's fault, and that is gaming. As we know, these new MacBooks can be extremely fast for gaming, smoking even the best graphics card in the latest 27 inch iMac, but that is only if the games support both ARM versions of macOS and are optimized for metal. GFX Bench shows how well these Macs can run being super close to an RTX 3080, and the same thing goes for 3 d Mark's latest cross-platform test, Wildlife Extreme. What is even crazier is that the M1 Max only uses up to 46 watts in a 16-inch MacBook and usually runs at about 43 at 100% load, whereas the RTX 3080 is best optimized at 105 watts and the 165 watt full power version isn't actually that much more powerful. And if you unplug one of those machines, they drop down to a similar 46 watts, but with way less performance than the M1 Max. But with that said, when it comes to actual gaming, only a handful of good games actually perform similarly to an RTX 3080. We have World of Warcraft, EVE Online, Baldur's Gate 3, and X-Plane 11. Now, there are also Apple Arcade games that have better graphics for their Mac variants, such as Asphalt, but in reality, 99% of games don't run well on these new MacBooks. As Anthony from Linus Tech Tips pointed out, even Mac OS games that are optimized for metal still perform shockingly bad with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, sometimes being barely faster than the M1 chip, and that is because of Rosetta. These games are designed for x86 Intel processors, and even though Rosetta did a great job with the M1 Max, we now know that for gaming, Rosetta cannot keep up with the high performance M1 Pro and M1 Max graphics and severely limits it. And if gaming wasn't bad enough in the past with Apple dropping support for OpenGL and not supporting Vulkan, which Nvidia, AMD, Intel, and Qualcomm do, which means that developers had to make Intel versions, they now also have to compile for ARM as well. So it is even tougher for AAA games to be optimized for these new MacBooks and the old ones run poorly. For now, you need a lot of workarounds to get games to run. 
Minecraft has a big process. Rocket League requires workarounds with Wine. Crossover 21 works for some games like GTA 5, but we still had to turn the settings way down because of Rosetta and new games with anti-cheat like Call of Duty simply don't work. We'll either have to wait for Windows games to be designed for ARM and then be optimized for Metal, or for Apple to pay developers a lot of money to properly port those over. With that, we have other software that doesn't run well or straight up doesn't work. Now I have to preface this and say that the vast majority of software has been updated and it was updated way faster than people expected. Even Adobe, who was slow with optimizations, has updated most of their software, including Premiere Pro, which performs shockingly well, like Matthew Moni showed in his video comparing the M1 Max to a custom Alder Lake BC with an RTX 3080, and a 14 inch MacBook beat out that desktop in Puget Bench's test, which tests a wide variety of different things in that software. And the same thing goes for photo editing, video editing, coding, music production, and most plugins now. The software is optimized and it's super fast, so for most people, these Macs run great, but we do still have other things that are taking a while to update, such as applications for a CAD design, like SolidWorks for Mac, and Visual Studio. Even simple software like Evernote and Dropbox haven't been updated yet, and I don't know how they say it will take until up to mid of next year, when these Macs have been out for over a year already. And along with that, lots of software that does show up as native still needs additional optimization. For example, Redshift, where the new MacBooks are way slower than its NVIDIA competition. And in general, 3D rendering has always been a weak spot for Macs, and even though it's going to be way faster with these new Macs, it is still not going to lead in this area. Blender just added support, and it is way faster than before, over five times in some of my tests, which ended up getting close and even matching up to an RTX 3080 laptop up using CUDA, even though this is the very first alpha release and it will get faster. And of course, because of the insane power efficiency of these Macs, they can do this on battery, whereas unplugging a high-end Windows PC causes the performance to plummet. With that said, even though these RTX graphics cards were released years before Apple Silicon was even announced, programs are still optimizing for them. And we also got a new version of Blender that can use ray tracing cores, which was not working in the version I tested in my latest 3D rendering comparison. So thank you guys for giving me the tips on how to set it up properly, which honestly, it should be preset out of the box this way, and also telling me to not use the GPU and CP rendering because the GPU only is actually faster as I verified myself. With these new optimizations, the Nvidia cards now use ray tracing cores, and man are they fast. Instead of taking 30 seconds for the BMW scene, it only took 12 with OptiX ray tracing, being close to three times faster than the Mac using Metal. And in the Classroom project, instead of taking just four seconds faster than the 60 inch M1 Max with OptiX, it is now exactly four times faster, taking just 26 seconds in the fastest GPU only mode. Now, of course, this is the alpha version of Metal and it is clearly going to get faster, but it still will not match a cheaper Nvidia laptop with RTX graphics. And Apple GPUs do not have hardware ray tracing at all, so don't expect magical results in the future. With that, we have to talk about raw power. Yes, the M1 Max can smoke the best Windows laptops in what they are optimized for, which is quite a lot actually due to the dedicated media hardware, which makes video editing insanely fast, or the tile memory with crazy bandwidth, which makes photo editing and coding super fast, but when it comes to a raw graphics grunt, PC laptops still win out. Looking at Geekbench 5, the 3080 smokes the M1 Max, and even though the RTX card does get beat in many real world tasks, when it comes down to things that need raw power, like denoising raw video, it still shows a big performance lead over the M1 Max. Now, of course, you have to be plugged in to get the full performance, but let's be honest. If you're gonna be doing this or 3D rendering, most people will be plugged in the majority of the time, and Apple isn't really a company that puts out an insane desktop GPU into a MacBook and then only offers that performance if it is plugged in. Apple always have designed their laptop 
laptop to perform the same whether it is plugged in or unplugged, which for most cases is a great thing. You don't lose performance, but in certain times like raw massive power, they do not compete with high-end RTX cards. And with that, the last thing that I wanna cover is eGPUs, because that is exactly what Mac owners would do to get crazy raw power when they are at their desk and plugged in. But with these new MacBooks, you cannot use an eGPU anymore, so you're limited to the power that is in your laptop. Of course, for most people, including myself, these new MacBooks are more than powerful enough, but for people doing really tough things that need raw GPU power, these MacBooks will still suck compared to a high-end Windows PC or even an Intel MacBook with one or two eGPUs attached. So there you guys go. These are the areas where the MacBook's still struggling. Let me know if you have any other software that's not working or other things that you think they need to improve in or Apple needs to fix down in the comments section below. Definitely check out our top 10 problems video. There's a, other, there's a lot of other additional information in Vadim's video. It is great. Click that circle above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.